defense began to call its witnesses just as day 20 of the Alec Murdoch double murder trial came to a close. It took the state a month to present all its evidence in this case as to why it believes Murdoch murdered his wife Maggie and their son Paul in June of 2021. Blair Sable explains how they tied it all together for the jury with new information uncovered only recently. Before the state officially rested its case, they presented an all encompassing timeline showcasing every data point, timestamp and video the jury has seen, including car tracking information that GM had sent over just last weekend. That was the last piece of the prosecution's puzzle of evidence, but the defense tried to say it still wasn't enough. There is no direct and frankly circumstantial evidence presented that the defendant shot and killed his wife Maggie or son Paul. The judge, however, stated otherwise. At this stage of the proceedings, uh, there is evidence to support a guilty verdict if it is believed by the jury. I therefore deny the motion for a directed verdict. The state used their final witness to remind the jury of several inconsistencies in Murdoch's alibi and the new data showed that he was speeding to and from Almeda the night of the murders, going faster than he had driven all day on dark and worn down roads. He also passed by the spot where authorities would later find Maggie Murdoch's cell phone at 908 PM on June 7th, 2021, just as he texted his wife. Before the end of the day, the defense did call two of its first witnesses, but didn't really get into the weeds. They are expecting to have longer testimony come Tuesday. That's the very latest here in Walterboro. Blair Sable, Live 5 News. It's been a long four weeks of this trial, and the defense says they'll likely need two more on top of that to call up their witnesses to try and prove why Murdoch did not kill Maggie and Paul. Life 5's legal analyst attorney Mark Pepper joining us from his law offices in Charleston. Mark, a big day today. How do you think the state did resting its case? You know, did they wrap things nicely uh, uh, for the jury? Yeah, good evening, Cameron, and uh, happy Friday. I look forward to the long weekend, just as I'm sure the state and defense do as well, particularly the state, because I thought they had an outstanding day. By my count, we had about 55 or so witnesses called in the last four weeks. And yet with one single witness today, they were able to bring in their entire theme of the case, establish a timeline of events, narrow down the time of death, specifically to some time between 8.49 and 9.02 p.m. They then show Alec walking, presumably to his car, making three phone calls to someone who's presumably dead at his hands and starting to establish his alibi. All of that with all the data points we heard from 20 or 30 witnesses combined into one. Very, very powerful today. But more importantly, they kind of stuck to their theme through that same witness, as Blair just alluded to. They were also asking him questions that elicited answers regarding the drug problems, the financial problems, uh, even suggesting that this was some type of way to get out from under the pill problem. Remember the voicemail that was shown to the witness today, uh, not to mention the, the financial email voicemail sent to the banker wanting an extra 600 grand just weeks before uh, this, these murders took place. So uh, they certainly saved their best witness for last or at least their best evidence for last. And Mark, immediately after the state rested, the defense came back saying that there's not enough uh, sufficient evidence to prove that Murdoch did it. Why do you think they did that? And you, uh, do you think there was any chance that would actually get approved? Yeah, I thought you and, and the viewers might be a little curious in that because it kind of seemed half hearted. And the answer is that it's procedurally. It has to be done procedurally to protect uh, and preserve all the uh, appellate reviews that will come uh, if there's a conviction. Uh, in our state, if you don't make a directed verdict motion, then you lose certain rights uh, at the next phase of the appeal. So it was kind of a, a half-hearted, if you will, jab, uh, just to see if the judge, the gatekeeper, uh, might just take the bait and bite on it. Of course he didn't, because the law in our state is that if there's been any evidence that can be reasonably deduced or inferred to lead towards guilt, then I'm compelled to let the jury, the fact finders, decide for themselves. And that's what he ruled today. So this was more of a procedural pomp and circumstance at the, at the close of the state's case. 
And one last question for you. The defense only got to two witnesses today, not quite as maybe as hard hitting as they maybe had hoped for, and they didn't even get that much time on the stand. Uh, but who do you think the defense could call up that might be that hard hitting witness with that maybe bombshell testimony, if anybody? Yeah, I don't I don't think that we're going to see a lot of knockout blows. We're not going to see some any uppercuts. I think what we're going to see is a steady jab to the body, maybe one cross left cross every now and then, but they're going to stick to their script, which is to attack the investigation in and of itself. How do you do that? You call experts of your own expert after expert after expert. All you're trying to do is discredit the state's case. Now, I also think that we'll hear from certain family members because remember, their theory is not only he didn't do it, they can't prove he didn't do it because of the sloppiness of the investigation, but there's no way he could have done it because he's a family man. He loved his family. So expect to hear from Buster, expect to hear from John Marvin, expect to hear from Randy uh, and anybody else. Remember, his character is in at this point, right? He's got to essentially rehabilitate it. Uh, now, I think he'll fall on the sword on some things. Uh, I don't think we'll get some kumbaya moment, nor will we get some A-bomb moment. I think it'll be a steady, steady jab. One thing to keep in mind uh, as we go through these next two weeks is that the jury verdict has to be unanimous. That meaning all 12 jurors have to agree on guilt or innocence. If it's 10 to 2, 11 to 1, 6 to 6, etc., it's a mistrial. So the viewers at home, put yourselves in the jury box. Based on what you've heard right now, what is your vote? The state would want you to think beyond a reasonable doubt, guilt. Because if not, well, then they've got a problem because all you're gonna hear from over the next two weeks are defense witnesses. A lot to look forward to in the next couple weeks, Cameron. And of course, for everyone watching at home, that opinion could very well change in the next uh, few weeks as a